The Ice Barrier archetype is a purely water attributed series of monsters that come in three core parts. The Warriors, the Generals and the Sealed Dragons. Oh and there's also this good boy. The archetype made its first debut in 2009's booster pack Hidden Arsenal. Further support would slowly be added over the next decade in packs The Shining Darkness, Star Strike Blast, Hidden Arsenals 2, 3 and 4, Photon Shockwave, Battles of Legend, Light's Revenge, Lightning Overdrive, Blazing Vortex, Gold Series 3, Duelist Saga and the most recent support in 2021's Structure Deck Freezing Chains. The idea behind an Ice Barrier deck is to summon one of or as many of the extra deck dragons as possible, as each wields a powerful effect that is able to lock down the opponent. Brianak can return multiple cards on the field back to the hand every turn. Gungnir can destroy up to two cards on the field every turn. And Trishula, well, Trishula can banish three cards on summon. One from the hand, one from the field, and one from the grave. In fact, nowadays as well, it even has a shiny new form, which adds even more versatility to the things these dragons can do. However, there is an unfortunate problem tied to these boss monsters, and that is the fact that they all have generic summoning requirements, yet have powerful splashable effects that aren't tied to their own archetype. Why is that a problem, you might ask? It makes them extremely versatile right? Well, I would say yes, but that also means that even despite the fact Brianak, Gungnir and Trishula are ace monsters to the ice barrier archetype, the irony is they are actually very rarely played within their own archetype, as pretty much every other synchro based deck can get out these monsters better than their own archetype can. And that's kind of sad. The reason for this is because ice barriers don't have a particular archetypal gimmick or strategy that sets them apart. They all kind of do different things. However, giving points where they are due, this has changed slightly as of late thanks to the latest support they received. Now, the deck is more focused on relying on the low level monsters locking down the opponent's monsters in various ways, giving the user time to break out their ice dragons. This playstyle does actually fit with the theme of the deck too, as the more ice barrier monsters you're able to get on the field, the colder the aura they are able to emit, essentially freezing them in place and causing them to not really have any place to do. That is until you decide to break out the extra deck monsters, where unfortunately you have to give up all of your protections for an all out attack. Now the ice barriers are a part of a very long and deep storyline within the Yu-Gi-Oh! Dual Terminal lore. It involves betrayal, hatred, war, and it all intertwines dozens of other archetypes. It's a long story and unfortunately we don't have time to tell it all today. I guess we could talk a little bit about it. Specifically how the ice barriers were the ones responsible for enveloping the world in a veil of ice, after they released three cataclysmic dragons. In fact, a quick bit of backstory, long, long ago, before all of this happened, there were three dragons that rampaged up on some snowy mountains. A man who had become the founder of the Ice Barrier tribe was able to seal these three dragons using a special mirror, and he was able to keep them at bay. This act actually allowed his spirit to transcend, becoming an ethereal watchkeeper for the three dragons. Long ago, there existed four tribes caught in a perpetual cycle of war with one another. The tribes consisted of the Flamevel, who resided in the Nation of Fire, the Exabers, who lived in the Domain of Earth, the Mist Valley, who resided in the Land of Wind, and the Ice Barriers, who existed in the Providence of Water. These four tribes would engage in war with one another for many decades, as a means to expand their own territory. However, none could seem to take the upper hand. However, this all changed when they appeared. Organisms from outer space descended down upon the dual world. Monstrous biological creatures with slanted mouths and a slimy exterior. They were part of an invasive species that would latch itself onto passing meteorites and would lie in wait until they collided with a hospitable planet. Upon contact, they begin to mutate and evolve to fit their environment. Once ready, they begin to multiply exponentially. They have only one goal which is to consume every last resource on the planet they invade and then move on to the next. This new threat was suffocating and seemed almost impossible to beat due to how fast they were able to replicate. Though reluctant, the four tribes were forced to create a truce. They would hold off their attacks on each other and instead direct their forces towards their common enemy that they dubbed 
the worms. The flame veils began scorching away the invaders. The X Sabres met them head on in battle. The mist valleys would blow them away. However, it was the ice barriers that threw the biggest punch, as they decided to unleash one of the sealed ice dragons that they had dedicated their lives to keeping at bay. Believing that they could harness the dragon Brianek's power, they unleashed it. His chilling aura pushed the invaders back and almost wiped them all out. That is, until they realized that the worms had a very special power, something that had made them very effective at what they do. When the worms are exposed to a situation that could lead to their extinction, they begin to rapidly evolve, allowing themselves to adapt into an even more formidable form. The horrors that the worms unleashed from that day was unspeakable. Countless tribes were slaughtered in a landslide of bio-organic horror. The tribes that were still alive gathered together and held a conference. They realized that they couldn't oppose the invaders alone and decided to join together in an all-out attack. They named this alliance the Allies of Justice. They would bring together the best of each of their technologies and magics to create powerful anti-worm weapons. The first of these to be developed was the prototype Ally of Justice Core Destroyer. The group had created the Ally Mine to power the machine. It had been loaded with elements collected from the meteors the worms had come from, and as such, it made the machines highly tuned in terms of its performance to eradicate worm-like entities. One field test with Core, and after seeing its capabilities, they continued to develop it even further into the Ally of Justice, Catasta. As soon as Catasta was deployed on the battlefield, the results were immediate. It tore through countless waves of the worms, decimating everything in its path, not allowing them even a chance to evolve. Over time, more justices were developed and used to wage war. However, there was simply not enough of them to end the invasion. The worms began spreading even further across the continent, spilling into the forests of the Naturia, the lands of the Jurak, the Gen X, and even the Fables. With more and more soldiers continuing to be slaughtered, the ice barriers hesitantly decided to release the second of their sealed ice dragons, the dragon Gungnir. With its breath of ice froze thousands of the worms in place, allowing the allies of justice to shatter them to pieces. This event had slowed down the spread significantly, but it was again not enough to call the invaders. The tribes began to sense a final battle was approaching, and so they began construction on an ultimate weapon. Their suspicions proved correct, as the sky began to rip apart. What came out was something that the denizens couldn't believe. An entire hive mind of worms. The amalgamation looked almost like a moon as it descended down upon the planet. Worm Zero was the name it was given. The creature as it approached the planet began absorbing all of the other worms into itself, growing stronger and stronger as each second passed, killing and swallowing anything that merely moved before it. In a panic, the tribes revealed their trump card, the Ally of Justice Decisive Armor. With the collective power of all that had made it, the weapon fired into the heart of the Worm Zero. With its supreme anti-worm technology embedded in its core, it was able to rip a hole through the Worm Zero, which slowly began to spread, disintegrating every last molecule of every last worm that made up its being. They had won. The battle was over. The tribes, exhausted and diminished from the months of war, let out a heavy breath of relief. However, this victory would not last for long. For you see, the fabled, who had been patiently biding their time for the right opportunity, decided to make their move. They began attacking the other tribes while they were weak and broken. Their victory was almost assured, and it appeared that the fabled would be the clan that would achieve world conquest. That is, until the ice barriers, with what little strength they had left, decided on a final play. They would break the seal to the most destructive force known to man, the final sealed ice dragon, Trishula. Blinded by hatred and without thought for consequences, the ice barriers unleashed Trishula upon the fabled. The results were better than they could even have imagined. A creeping ice crept across the battlefield, emanating from the dragon Trishula, flash freezing everything in its path. The fabled stood no chance against the barrage of ice. However, even after their defeat, the ice continued to spread more and more. Victory had been achieved, yet the dragon continued to rampage. Plants began to die, 
lakes started to freeze over, and the very people that the ice barriers had tried to save were freezing in their homes. A medium attempted to seal Trishula once again in the mirror of the ice barriers. However, this time, it did not work. And so, with no way to stop the dragon, the realization of what they had done had set in. The ice barriers had doomed the world to suffer an eternal age of ice. That is, however, until the founder of the ice barrier in his ethereal form appeared. Now, the sacred spirit of the ice barrier, he had been watching over the dragon seal for generations, waiting for a time where all three had been released before he would appear. He used a sacred sealing technique at the cost of his very own being to successfully seal all three dragons once again. The eternal winter had been stopped. In terms of the monster lineup, the ice barriers are, well, pretty big. So how about we look at them in separate parts? Let's start off first with the variants. We have five tuners in the deck, which are the ice barriers Hexa Spirit, Dudark, Cryomancer, Defender, and Geomancer. There is one spirit monster in this archetype, Sacred Spirit of the Ice Barrier. After this, we have the rest of the main deck monsters. The level 1s, Blizz Defender and Caravan of the Ice Barrier. The level 2s, Secret Guards, Zuijin and Prior of the Ice Barrier. The level 3s, Warlock and Shock Troops of the Ice Barrier. The level 4s, Speaker for the Ice Barrier, Numbing Grub in the Ice Barrier. Those two have a little bit of a variant in the names, fun fact. Spellbreaker, Pilgrim, Strategist, Dance Princess, Revealer, Mirror Judge, and Samurai of the Ice Barrier. Then we have one level 5, Royal Knight of the Ice Barrier, one level 6, Dai Sojo of the Ice Barrier, and one level 7, Medium of the Ice Barrier. But the question then becomes, who were the ones to lead all of these monsters in battle? Well, that's where the generals come in. There are four of them. General Wayne, General Raiho, General Gentala, and General Grenard. Duloran, Tiger King of the Ice Barriers. Known in the Japanese as Duloran, Tiger Prince of Ice Barrier. Its effect is you can target any number of other face-up cards you control. Return those targets to the hand. And if you do, this card gains 500 attack for each card returned to the hand by this effect until the end of the turn. It's worth noting that in the unlikely event that the Ice Dragons were to go on a rampage, Duloran was to serve as the safety device. But unfortunately, his power was not enough for the three rampaging ice dragons. And as a result, he was defeated through a surprise attack from Trishula. Brianak, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. You can discard any number of cards to the graveyard, then target the same number of cards your opponent controls. Return those cards to the hand. You can only use this effect of Brianak, Dragon of the Ice Barrier, once per turn. It's worth noting that Brianak has had five errors throughout its life, being quite heavily nerfed throughout its time as well. Well, in its original first effect, its effect stated you could discard any number of cards to return the same number of cards from the field to the hand. There was no once per turn, you didn't have to get the cards in the graveyard to use the effect, so quite the nerf really. Also, it's worth mentioning that despite looking like a dragon, having dragon in its name, and being part of a trio of sealed ice dragons, this monster is not actually a dragon. I have no idea why they did this, but... All right, whatever. Now, it's also worth noting as well that each of the ice dragons gets its name from a legendary spear from mythology. For Brianak, it is the supposed name of the spear wielded by Lu, a deity in Irish mythology. It was a spear that could create five beams of light that shot from its tip. These beams could either take a straight focus path or bend at its own will, and they could do some real serious damage when it hits something. Gungnir, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. Once per turn, you can discard up to two cards to the graveyard, then target the same number of cards your opponent controls, destroy them. Now, Gungnir's name is taken from the Spear of Odin from Norse mythology. The spear was a symbol of power, protection, and authority. Its name means the Swaying One. The reason for this is because it brings people to Odin. Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. When this card is Synchro Summoned, you can banish up to one card each from your opponent's hand, field, and graveyard. The card in hand is chosen at random. Trishula's name is based on the spear Trishula, a divine weapon from Hinduism. It was said to be so powerful that it was even able to sever the head of a god. The word Trishula itself also translates to 
three spears. This is referenced with the three heads this monster has. Trishula would acquire two alternate forms. A fusion form, Trishula the Dragon of Icy Imprisonment, known as Ice Prison Dragon Trishula. This card requires three monsters with different names to be summoned, and it must first be either fusion summoned using only monsters in your hand and or field, or special summoned from your extra deck by banishing the above cards you control, in which case you do not use polymerization. If this card was special summoned using only monsters that were originally dragons, you can reveal and banish three cards. One from your deck, one from the top of your opponent's deck, and one from their extra deck. Trishula also has an upgraded synchro form, Trishula Sub-Zero Dragon of the Ice Barrier. Known in the Japanese as Trishula Return Sub-Zero Dragon of the Ice Barrier. Its effect is when this card is synchro summoned, you can banish up to three cards your opponent controls. If this synchro summoned card in its owner's control is destroyed by an opponent's card, you can special summon one Trishula Dragon of the Ice Barrier from your extra deck or graveyard. Its attack becomes 3300. Halve the attack of any face-up monsters your opponent currently controls, also negate their effects. You can only use the effect of Trishula once per turn. Note that each dragon that follows the dragon before it has attack that is increased by 200 and defense that is increased by 300. Not only that, each dragon also has a corrupted E-Swarm counterpart that has exactly 50 more attack and defense than their original forms. And not only that, they also all have a Necro's counterpart. They all seem to be wearing their hides as armor and use weapons made from them too. Despite a rather large monster lineup, the spells and traps, well, there's not that many of them. There's Medallion of the Ice Barrier, Winds Over the Ice Barrier, which is known in the Japanese as the Storm Clearing Over the Ice Barrier, Magic Triangle of the Ice Barrier, Freezing Chains of the Ice Barrier, known in the Japanese as Crystal Wall of the Ice Barrier, as well as Mirror of the Ice Barrier and Terror of Trishula, known in the Japanese as Pulse of Trishula. And with that, guys, that is the Ice Barrier Archetype done let me know what you thought in the comment section below before we go let's say a big thank you to the people that helped make these videos possible my sponsors to my platinum backers that give that little bit extra every month nemo chan 77 thank you so much it means a lot to me as well to my youtube and gold backers michael waklorski silver defender stefan pole goosey q ignis Drasil, omar lopez Yu-Gi-Oh! everything queen elizabeth denise leggin jeremy pontier kobe selvaniagam danny bound jeremy benj as well all my silver backers and with that i'll see you all next time.